Okay, I thought that was, uh, again, that's our new format. I thought it was really interesting. The discussion points were really interesting. We'll uh, minimize the bureaucracy paperwork switching part of it. I think over time we'll get more efficient with that. And then the discussions are gonna be really great. So um, just continue to put your suggestions in, uh, You know, let us know what you think. Um, and I really wanna thank Dr. Brower again for spearheading this uh, change. Yep. All right. Um, so we have a couple of things. Um, so just close that one because we're not gonna use that again. Okay. All right, so a couple of things. I'm just gonna start going through the announcements to try to keep us on time. We really wanna stay on time in this conference. So again, for folks who weren't here at the beginning of m, &M uh, welcome. This is the start of the new year. Um, we're gonna have, as you remember from last year, we uh, kind of took back July to, to meet our new interns. We're gonna continue with that. Um, and obviously starting uh, m, m as well. So uh, in terms of our slides, our introduction slides this morning, first one is uh, kudos. So um, we want to reach out and say kudos to Dr. Mike Schmitz, Maria Balahadia, and Isabella Lorenzo for being flexible and helping to cover last minute call shifts at the U and to Dr. Isaac Crum for managing EGS without a co-intern. So congratulations and thank you uh, for that work. Thanks, there's some clapping in the back. Um, yep. Uh, again, um, the, uh, for our conferences, it's our culture to wear professional attire. Also, we would really like uh, folks to turn on their cameras as a sign of engagement with the, the conference. So uh, I'd sort of like to get that set as our standard uh, for this time. Uh, again, it's more important that you come and participate and, and engage. So uh, please do that. Uh, at this point, I would show you the kudos slide so you could put something up for the next group. Looks like we're maybe getting there. Um, so there we go. So. All right, we saw that. And so here we go. Put up your, if you have any kudos or anything that you'd like to submit, we really appreciate that. Uh, please do that now. There's no CME for this session as it's our introduction session. Um, here's our schedule for the day. Uh, we have had the m, m conference, which we already have. We're going to have our introductions from uh, these first uh, five residents. There's junior core, senior core, um, uh, absite study group. And then I would like to remind the PGY1 residents that they're having their meeting with um, the chief residents today. And that's upstairs in our conferences, um, conference office uh, upstairs. Here's the box for the comment box. Please go ahead and put in some comments. All right, and then the attendance link. For those of you who are here, again, only in-person attendance counts. Okay. All right, and so then it goes right into the rest of the slides. All right, so uh, I'd like to start again. Uh, we're gonna meet our uh, new folks, which is really exciting. And I'd like to start with Dr. Valhadia. Please come on up, welcome.
Can everyone hear me? Um, let's see. I press the. Okay, so I'm Maria Balahaja. I titled my thing uh, Wahoo Si Maria. So in my native tongue of tomorrow, just means I am Maria because I couldn't think of anything more clever. Um, there's that. Um, I grew up in the Mariana Islands. So that is a chain of islands east of the Philippines. Um, we're part of Micronesia and also US territory. Um, and our indigenous populations are Chamorro and Carolinian, and I identify as Chamorro. Um, I grew up specifically on the island of Saipan. So sometimes you'll hear me say Saipan instead. Um, growing up, I grew up in a multi-generational household with my grandmother. Um, who was a really big inspiration in my life. Uh, she was my best friend and she also was sort of my first patient because it helped take care of her growing up and especially towards the end of her life. Um, I also um, was very big in music. So I played the violin, did a lot of speech um, stuff in high school, which I think helped me uh, learn how to take constructive criticism, which I feel like comes in handy in residency. Um, so that's, there's that. Um, and this is a picture of my grandmother at her farm, another picture of her farm. And then this is a picture of outside of my house. Uh, we have like an outside kitchen. I don't know why we have like a nice stove inside, but everything gets cooked on this like butane gas stove outside. And that's just how it is back home. And this is a picture of the beach by my house. Um, at 18, I moved to Seattle, uh, went to University of Washington for undergrad and studied microbial. Uh, funny story is I actually, uh, was trying to apply to the microbiome department and I just Googled UW microbiome advisor. And I ended up um, setting an appointment with this person only to find out on the day of my meeting, it was um, the advisor for the University of Wisconsin microbiome department. Um, so I immediately canceled my appointment that day and I was really embarrassed to say why, um, but it turned out fine because I still ended up in uh, microbiome. Um, down here is actually a picture of Dr. Edmund Fisher who discovered reverse phosphorylation and um, got to speak to our biochem class at the time. Um, after college, I tried to find a job, which was very difficult. I ended up doing a year or uh, a term of AmeriCorps, um, which is basically a full-time volunteer position where you get paid a monthly stipend, which still gets taxed. Um, so you, uh, it's very hard financially, um, but I love what I did. I worked with elders, which is one of my favorite um, populations to work with. Um, but I did need to recuperate financially, so I decided to move home after six years in Seattle. Before that, though, I went to Vegas for the first time and blew all my money that I wasn't going to spend on rent anymore um, to watch Mariah Carey, who is one of my favorite artists. Um, back home, I worked for public health for a year or something like that. Um, I also worked for the public school system, coordinating, coordinating early intervention services for infants and toddlers um, with developmental disabilities and delays. And this is my team down here. And while I loved my team and the people that I worked with, um, and I thought it was very meaningful work, I really actually hated my job. Um, so that motivated me even more to apply to medical school and take the MCAT. And um, yeah, I finally got in four years after I graduated from undergrad. Um, I went to AT Still University. Um, the original campus is in Missouri, um, but there is a sister campus in Arizona. And our curriculum is set so that we only spend one year in Arizona. Um, and then we are affiliated with like 16 federally qualified health centers all throughout the US from like Seattle to South Carolina, and then one in Hawaii. And I was fortunate enough to be matched to the one in Hawaii. So I actually spent most of my medical school years in Hawaii, um, which is great for me because I, that was closer to home for me. Um, I did most of my rotations on the island of Oahu, which um, has like Waikiki or Honolulu, it's the most populated island. Um, but I actually got to do some of my rotations um, on Hawaii Island. And Hawaii Island is the biggest island in the Hawaiian chain, but it is also more rural. Um, and that's where all the active volcanoes are located. So it was a lot of fun. Um, I did surgery there. And at the time, it was probably like December, January of uh, third year. I was, um, I did my surgery rotation at that time, and I had actually been thinking about family medicine up until that point, um, but I realized how interested I was in surgery, especially working in a rural environment. Um, this is Dr. Cassidy, um, one of my surgery attendings, and it was just uh, med students and our attending, so we didn't actually work with any residents at the time. Um, 
And I was like, uh oh, like, you know, I'm in trouble. I didn't really consider myself a competitive applicant for surgery. Um, so I had to do some soul searching from then until when ERAS was due like nine months later. <laughs> um, but fortunately, I was part of Student National Medical Association um, for all four years of medical school. And I attended their annual conference in April of my third year. So about four months after surgery rotation. Um, and this was their first in-person conference since COVID started. So they had this big exhibitor fair. And I, one of my friends came up to me and she was like, you need to go to the University of Minnesota booth. Um, there's a general surgery resident who is a DO and Latina. So I went over there, invited myself <laughs> or introduced myself and I met Marissa. Um, and so Marissa, who's the most recent rural track resident uh, graduate, um, actually became a great mentor to me throughout this whole process of applying to the residency. Um, but I wasn't quite there like with the decision to apply to surgery at the time. So my last rotation of uh, third year, I actually did another surgery rotation as an elective, which everyone thought was um, maybe not the smartest idea, but um, I rotated with Dr. Maria Vare in this photo right here um, in Hawaii. And that was really what solidified my decision um, to apply to surgery just four months before ERAS was due. So that was an exciting time. Um, and then, you know, besides that, being part of SNMA, I am very passionate about um, increasing the number of black and brown medical students and doctors. I'm very passionate about mentorship, um, especially for Pacific Islanders who I don't, I don't think a lot of us um, go into healthcare or become physicians. So um, I don't have an extensive research background, but I was fortunate to do some research in hospice palliative care um, during my second year of medical school. It was actually through the University of Pittsburgh. Um, and I, on my sub I here, I actually met um, Alexa Robbins. She was my chief of the VA. And I, we had talked about our similar interests in hospice palliative care. And I think that is also one of the reasons why um, I was very interested in coming to the University of Minnesota, um, just because I felt like these interests, which may not be your stereotypical surgery interests were something I could expand upon um, during my residency here. Oh, and that's the picture. This is a picture from our clinic um, that we were stationed at or our classroom, so yeah. And then I just wanted to end with this slide um, by a, a Suolafi Fruin, who is uh, from Samoa. She said, I am not self-made, I'm community made, I'm village made. Um, and I say this because, uh, you know, besides the love and the support of my family, which has really got to me far, um, I do have a lot of people from back home, from my community, my islands, my people, um, that really rooted for me up until this point. And I hope to one day serve them as a physician um, in the near future. Um, and so in Chamorro, we would say Maasi. In the other indigenous language, you say Olamai, which means thank you um, to the University of Minnesota General Surgery Program for allowing me to be here, share my story, and for being part of my village now. Thank you. Thanks for that. And um, it just reminds us why we do uh, these introductions, I think, to find uh, it's so many interesting things uh, about our, our new colleagues. I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Sarah Crawford as our next presenter. All right, can everyone hear me? Okay, wonderful. Uh, so this is me. Uh, this is a picture of my family on med school graduation. Um, on the left there is my older brother. He is actually also an MD student. He's an MD PhD student at MCW. Uh, he just got his PhD and is starting his M3 year clinical rotations also on surgery. I've been feeding him all my tips and tricks. Um, my mom is in the middle and then my grandparents are on the right and they have been very instrumental in my life. I've spent a lot of time with them growing up. Uh, these are some early pictures of me. Um, 
I am from Wisconsin, I'm very proud to say that, but unfortunately I can't say I was also born there. I was born in upstate New York in Ithaca, New York. Um, my mom was finishing up grad school at Cornell there, um, came home to my crib and a bunch of boxes. We moved to Madison um, when I was about a month old. The middle picture is, I guess, the first time I sat up on my own, biggest accomplishment thus far in my life. Um, that's a, in my grandparents' back, uh, driveway and they still live in that house. Uh, I had a really fun early childhood. Um, my family was very supportive of all of my interests. I was interested in science and medicine from a very early age. I don't know why, but I was allowed to like dissect all sorts of things on the kitchen table, not in a weird way, but that's an owl pellet. Um, I also was involved in some like early STEM programming. Um, so the picture on the right is um, me at um, an event that was put on by the med students at UW-Madison. So if anyone was involved in like the early doctor programs, uh, they do work, here I am. Um, the picture on the upper left is one of my favorites. It's uh, my favorite Halloween costume. I went as a trash can. Um, I don't know why I was allowed to do this, but I like got into the trash can and my older brother would ring the doorbell and I would pop out and say trick or treat and it was really fun. <laughs> um, when I was a teenager, I um, was a part of a French language immersion uh, camp up in Northern Minnesota. Um, they have many different languages. I was in the French one. I went as a young kid and then I worked there as a counselor. Um, and I just wanted to include it here because it was pretty instrumental in shaping my interests um, as an adult. Um, they had counselors from all over the world come. We had uh, quite a few from Western Africa. And we talked about um, and shared with the kids who were there um, all sorts of different cultural um, uh, activities and foods and just tidbits um, from the Francophone diaspora. And so um, you'll see that kind of played a part in my professional life moving forward. Um, and we just got to dress up in a lot of fun costumes and it was really fun. Here's my classic like first day of school and what could have been my last day of school. Um, spoiler alert, it wasn't. Uh, I went to the University of Wisconsin. Um, I did the international studies major. I was on the global health track. Um, I also got minors in uh, global health and African studies. It was very easy to get a minor in global health when you're already on the global health track. Um, Immediately after undergrad, I wanted to put my education into practice. And so I went abroad to Western Africa on two different contracts. Um, the text isn't showing up here, but I was in um, Lome in Togo for about five months. And then I was in um, uh, Malabo, which is Equatorial Guinea for about another five months. Um, in Togo, I worked uh, primarily for an HIV AIDS um, organization where we did educational programming um, to at-risk populations. So this was mostly um, soldier, uh, soldiers along the border, as well as um, uh, women at, in um, uh, group homes or women who worked, um, who were sex workers. And then the picture up in, in the upper middle um, is a picture of a clinic I also worked at essentially as like an NA. Um, I did intake as well. Um, really interesting learning experience. Everyone was very uh, kind and supportive of me. Uh, in Equatorial Guinea, I um, did an emergency care training program where we led seminars um, and taught essentially BLS as well as um, sanitation practices and basic first aid to um, clinicians and then helped them set up um, programming for their own communities so that it was a more of uh, more sustainable and uh, broader reaching program and you can see me teaching CPR to one of the clinicians in the bottom. I realized that I really needed a stronger education in program management and resource allocation so I went and got an MBA. I went to the University of Arizona which is in Tucson um, I made a lot of friends there and it was a really great learning experience. I did um, consulting projects for a few real world companies, um, primarily in healthcare. Uh, the upper left, we, um, I was very involved in a lot of case competitions. Uh, this was um, one that we did in California and we placed, it was, a, um, it was a case for a real health system on the East Coast, um, coming up with a better five-year plan for them. Um, the bottom is uh, most of my friends from uh, the MBA. Second from the left is uh, my friend John, who is currently um, in his last year of residency at the University of Arizona in internal medicine. And then third from the left, and then his wife in the yellow, 
Um, Tyler, he was actually got the same job as I did right out of MBA. So we were super productive. Our uh, desks were about four feet away from each other. These are the most exciting photos that I could find from my corporate life. Um, I worked for two different companies. The first was a healthcare IT company that was not Epic. It's called SunQuest. They do um, LIS for the lab. And then I worked um, for a genomics testing company out of, based out of San Diego. Um, they do uh, genomics-based um, prognostics. Uh, I was lucky enough to work from home from Wisconsin for that last year. I was a Zoomer before it was cool and before it was necessary. Um, my cat was also very instrumental in my, uh, she was my only coworker, essentially. Uh, then I went to medical school. Um, I had had exposures to um, primary, like direct patient care um, pretty much throughout this entire tra tra uh, trajectory, excuse me, that it wasn't really able to capture well here, but um, I had shadowed a surgeon um, at the University of Wisconsin in undergrad who ended up actually, she's the current program director um, for surgery at um, University of Wisconsin. So I was able to work with her. It was really awesome to have full circle moments there. Um, I was very involved in a few different organizations. The first was Wilderness Medicine. Um, I was also started an um, organization called Tech where we connected undergrad students with um, clinicians who had identified um, problems um, primarily that could, that could be addressed with um, like engineering innovation. Uh, so we connected them and then saw them throughout um, a semester uh, and then they would present their solutions at the end and we would pick winners. Um, and then I also worked with a pediatric anesthesiologist who was working on a novel um, respiratory monitoring device. Um, and she's actually gonna bring that to market fairly, fairly soon, hopefully. Uh, so here's my professional slide for my professional interests. Uh, the, I'm interested in surgical outcomes, durable medical device innovation, as well as peer mentorship and getting um, uh, young women involved in STEM. Uh, from a more personal note, this is my partner, um, his Hunter. He's a physical therapist. He works for um, a uh, home health agency affiliated with Fairview. So he just might see your discharges. Uh, he's from just north of the city. So we're getting married uh, in April of next year. We've been engaged for a little over a year. Please don't ask me how wedding planning is coming. It's not coming. Uh, here's my cat. Uh, she deserves a special call out um, because she also sat through all of our online medical school lectures. They wouldn't let her on clinical rotation, so she didn't end up with an MD either, but that's probably for the best. Uh, and then I like to do basically everything outdoors, um, hiking, camping, um, paddling. Uh, I really like to fly fish. Has a picture uh, with my brother. We were lucky enough to go up to Alaska and go salmon fishing. Um, and then I was also fortunate enough to go down to um, Patagonia. We went fishing for trout. That's a 15 pound rainbow. It's probably my biggest accomplishment. Uh, and then here's just a couple other photos. Um, I've been uh, having a great time since medical or in between medical school and residency. Uh, we went to Costa Rica. So I have a picture of a sloth to prove it. Um, I planted a garden and it is already going bananas with uh, squash and cucumbers. So if anyone wants any, please take them off my hands. Um, celebrated my brother's graduation and just enjoyed meeting all my new interns, co-residents. That's all. <laughs> My kids are there. That's the Norwegian camp. Super popular. Three million people speak Norwegian. Uh, well, me too. But uh, so our next person is uh, Jonathan Jenkins. Uh, we're very excited again. Um, I, I it's a lot of fun to get to to meet everybody. Howdy. My name is Jonathan Benjamin Jenkins, but you guys can call me Jam. A fun fact about me is when I was seven years old, I realized I didn't like when I met people and had no idea who they were, but they knew me really well. So my genius idea at seven years old was to go by a different name everywhere I went. So I knew where I knew people from and it was worked really effectively. So Jonathan's my Oklahoma name. My family calls me that if they talk to me. 
John a couple of times. I've gone by Joe a couple of times. I've been Johnny throughout college. I've been Nathan and that gave me Nate for a little while as well. I've been Ben. And so when I was going to residency, I was like, dang, what am I gonna do? I had a couple different ideas. I thought maybe Benji, I thought maybe a couple other things, but I landed in Jam and I chose Jam because my wife hates the puns that I could come up with that. And so I've really, really had a good time with that one. So my name is Jonathan Benjamin Jenkins, but you guys can call me Jam. I was born and raised in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I was right out here. Oh, can't see. So I was right out here. Um, I went to Broken Arrow High School right here outside of Tulsa. And my dad, he's an exterminator. And this is my mom. She's like a crisis care manager. I have uh, eight siblings. So there's nine of us, and it's kind of two generations. So uh, there's Kyle, Chris, Nicholas, and Andrea, and then 10 years in between Andrea and me. So I'm kind of the middle child. I'm kind of the oldest child. And then there's Charlotte, Julian, and Jaden, and Justin. I was the first in my family to go to college. So it was very interesting growing up in that kind of environment. When I was a little boy, I was severely burned. And so I started going to this camp for kids who were severely burned. And I went through that my entire childhood. This is me, like, I think my second or third year. I'm sort of leather bracelet. It was super fun. Um, and then I started volunteering at that camp in the late, like my late high school years throughout college and in medical school. This is my camper. His name is Kalen. Um, he was burned in a cooking accident when he was sick. And I've been his counselor ever since. And now we're besties for the resties. I, uh, in my senior year of high school, I met the love of my life. Her name is Carlin, now Jenkins, but was Brown. We went to prom together. This is a really awkward picture of us uh, right before prom. That is the most paved road in Oklahoma. And then we graduated high school together. Um, I went to Hendricks College in Conway, Arkansas, where I joined the swim team. I was a dive, but I did do a couple of sprints, but I mostly dove. And so we said we were the um, drowning and jumping team, but we were doing our best. I was also a cheerleader. Um, this is one of my favorite pictures from being on the swim team. We were recreating the creation of Adam painting. Um, that took, I think, like 50 different jumps with five different people. And this was the best one. So. I thought I had to include that. I was involved in a program in college where it was like kind of like a fast track for a PhD. The idea was that you start your uh, PhD research your freshman year of college, and then you go straight through the University of uh, Arkansas for Medical Sciences, which is the MD program in Arkansas, um, to finish your PhD. So here I am working in a cancer research lab uh, at the age of 18 years old. Um, nobody should have let me do that. I really wanted to mouth pipette things, but my PI was not a very big fan of that, particularly working with human uh, cancers. That's not really approachable. And then this was me giving my first research presentation and I had a very um, important guest listen to that. So I ended up not finishing my PhD. I decided I really wanted to give back um, to this burn community that really helped raise me. And so I decided to leave that program and go to medical school. Um, they were really, really grateful to let me go do that. My medical school didn't really want me to uh, wait to finish my PhD, so we did that. This is Wendy. She's the nurse that treated me when I was burned. She has been there for my entire life. She went to my high school graduation. She went to my college graduation. She was there the entire time. So this is when I got my white coat. This is my first day of clinical rotations. I was on OB-GYN at the same hospital that she is like the head charge nurse at. She brought me cookies. And then this is me on match day. And Wendy was there for that too. She would be here today if I, I could have invited. Uh, my, the love of my life moved back from uh, Florida. She was working for Disney after college because of the pandemic. Disney laid off a lot of their uh, people. We were best friends throughout college and during this time. Um, and so we got back together. We have two dogs. This is Charlie. That was her dog in college. And this is Heidi. This was my dog in med school. And I was pretty upfront with her. I was like, hey, I'm probably going to have to move somewhere across the country. There's only two uh, surgery programs in Oklahoma. And I don't know if I really want to go to those. So where do you want to go for residency? And she's like, I don't really care. I just care about the city. And so she gave me three options. She said, number one, we stay in Tulsa because we were both born and raised here. Number two, we go to Orlando because I used to work there. Or number we go to Minneapolis because I work for Target headquarters. And I said, okay, I want to go to a place where I have the opportunity to do a lot of research and see some really cool stuff. So that's not happening in Tulsa. And then I looked at Orlando and I'm not talking a lot of smack on Tulsa, but just a little bit. Um, number two, I looked at Orlando and they didn't really have a lot of academic programs. And so I was like, please, 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 Dr. Brunsfold, please take me. And that worked. Um, 
So we did our rank list and we had convinced ourselves that we were going to match at like the bottom of our list. So my wife was really, really worried we were going to end up somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Um, she talked to a couple of the chief residents at my home program who I was really good friends with and they gave a lot of advice, but she was fully convinced we were like going to be um, somewhere. So she wasn't exactly sure on her top three. And so this was us right as we opened the letter. This was us processing the letter. And then this was us like after we processed the letter on where we were going to go. Um, I just graduated from school. So when somebody gives me a set of instructions for a PowerPoint and the direct quote was highlight any research or research interest in your talk. So I'm checking off all of my boxes here. Um, I've done a lot of uh, pretty significant research projects. So I picked my top three. I worked in a thyroid cancer research lab. We designed a couple of chemotherapeutics um, that are going through FDA process right now. So we have a patent on one of those. I worked on a couple of bariatric research projects and I actually missed a day of orientation so I could go present that research. And then I worked in um, pediatric child abuse as well. And we have a couple of research projects in that. I'm really interested in anything that has like a super fun question. What I like most about science is I can ask a really difficult question and then figure out how to answer it in a way no one else has done before. But I really like working in burn care and I really like peds. And so I'm interested in those fields as well. That's my talk. Dr. Mara Case, very excited. Can everyone hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Mara. Um, this is my pug Maeve. This is her backpack that she goes on when she gets tired when we go for walks. She can usually make it about a half mile before she will sploot down and refuse to get up. And not, she's not tired, she just doesn't wanna keep walking. So we either have to carry her or we get her a backpack. So this was our solution. So I texted my mom and asked her for a picture of my family. And apparently she only has JCPenney portrait photos of us. So here are my brothers and I, uh, the littlest one is Nolan. He just graduated high school. He's about to be the kicker on the UW Eau Claire football team. So if anyone's into college football, look out for him. And then my brother Brady is in marketing and he lives down in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, I grew up in Eau Claire, which is about an hour and a half if you're in the direct middle of the city from here. Um, and then in the bottom left corner is my family. My mom's in the front, she's a nurse. Uh, my dad is in the kind of salmon colored shirt. He's a mechanical engineer. And then my brothers and then Cassidy in the middle is my brother's partner. And then my husband back there in the green is Tyler. So I wanted to start with high school. Um, in high school, athletics was a really big part of my life. I ran cross country, played soccer. Um, this picture right here is with my grandfather. He was one of my biggest supporters and my best friends. And he's the one who really got me um, interested in running. And then I posted the obligatory uh, high school musical jumping shot that everybody did back in the 2010s when you graduated. So those are my high school friends. Um, then I came to the University of Minnesota for undergrad. Uh, there's me in the middle with my gopher rolls on at a, at a football game. Um, I worked at the Genomics Center all four years of college. I did all the Sanger sequencing for all the labs on campus here, which was the best college job you could ask for. I enjoyed it immensely. Um, I was, used to be on Girls on the Run when I was younger, and so I wanted to give back to the community, and I was a Girls on the Run coach for three seasons here in Minneapolis, and there's me with two of my co-coaches at one of the 5Ks that they held um, out actually at out by MOA, they'd have the girls run around Mall of America. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, down in the bottom right, that is my Partners in Health Engage um, executive team. So I was part of the, the second year that they brought Partners in Health Engage. Um, it's the college equivalent of Partners of Health, um, Paul Farmer's organization, the NGO. And we got to go to Boston and we got to FaceTime with Paul Farmer, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, in the middle there is my uh, college graduation. That's my mom and my dad. And then I included a picture. So I studied abroad in Thailand for a couple of weeks for the global health um, elective that they have within the academic health institution here. And so that is Chiang Mai, Thailand right there. So 
Then I went to Kansas City for medical school. Um, up in the top, are, those are my friends on graduation day. And then also some of my friends after we got done studying for step two and went out for ice cream at Betty Ray's. Uh, I also included a picture of my favorite barbecue place, Joe's. So that's the Z-Man. It has brisket, provolone cheese, barbecue sauce, and onion rings. And it is, I dream about that sandwich some days. <laughs> um, and there's my partner, Tyler, and I both on uh, white coat ceremony day. And then when I matched here at the U and that's my family on graduation day as well. Here's some pictures of Maeve because I couldn't resist. Uh, we got her in 2020 during the pandemic. So she um, has some codependency issues. She likes to be with one of us at all times, which my husband works from home. So luckily someone is with her constantly. Um, but so there's a picture of us from our wedding and there's her out for a walk. And that bat is her favorite toy. She's had it forever. I got it like a Halloween sale for like $2 in the bin, but she absolutely loves it. And then in my time since I graduated medical school, I've been doing some, some more fun activities. So I'm a big Minnesota United fan. My husband and I are. We've been going to the game since they first became pro here at the U um, when they were still playing at TCF Bank Stadium. So here's a picture of us after they moved to Allianz, my little brother and Tyler and my dad. Um, actually, graduation day in Kansas City, they had a Minnesota United was playing the KC Sporting in Kansas City. So instead of going out for dinner, we all just went to the game instead. So, um, and we went to Arizona this past year. That's my whole family down in the corner. I took up golfing, which I used to work at a golf course in high school, um, but I never took up golfing, but decided that it was finally time to start. So um, after studying for step two, we'd go to the driving range a little bit, but I didn't start doing the full nine or 18 holes until recently. Um, I also love the show Selling Sunset on Netflix. And so when we went to California for a wedding, we decided to go to the Oppenheim group and take a picture outside. And then in January, I went to New York City with um, some of my friends. And so that's just a picture of us outside Rockefeller Center. Uh, athletics is still a big part of my life. So cross country skiing is something that I've been doing since I was really little. That first picture there is a picture of my little cousin and I in Eau Claire skiing. And then the picture in the middle is all of my cousins and my grandfather and I cross country skiing at that same place. And then this was this last winter, my dad and my husband and I cross country skiing there again. So just the progression of the same sort of trails in Eau Claire. Um, I've also, I'm a runner, so I've done two marathons. I did the Twin Cities Marathon and then I did the Duluth Marathon. Grandma's up there. Uh, do not recommend doing Grandma's Marathon. It sounds great to run around the lake for 26 miles, but you realize the lake is just next to you the whole way. And there's no, there's no twist, there's no turns. It gets it's a little boring. Definitely recommend Twin Cities though. Uh, I also was part of the global health honors track when I was at Kansas City University. And so I was able to do a family medicine rotation in Guatemala uh, two years ago. And so that first picture is a picture of the volcano and from the roof of our building where we stayed. And then here are some of my friends and I after we finished up a day in clinic. And here's just a picture of us walking, walking to our school bus. So um, it was really great to be able to have that experience during um, medical school. And then as far as my research interests, so I have a lot of interest in global health and global medicine. Um, I did a research project looking at a minimally invasive cytosponge technique for detecting esophageal dysplasia rather than a traditional EGD in rural Africa. And then I also was part of the Women in Medicine Research Lab, which is a um, interprofessional lab that focuses on gender equity in medicine. And so that's something that I'm very passionate about. And I have a couple of projects there and looking forward to continuing on that gender equity work. And then I also, like Sarah, I included a picture of all of our interns. And that's all I have. Dr. Crum. Uh, thanks everybody for submitting your slides in advance so we can kind of get them all together in one presentation. That's, that's been really great too. Uh, helps us decrease our, um, here you go, decrease our switching time. Um, hi, so I'm Isaac Crum. I'm one of the new prelims here for the year. Um, and this isn't my favorite topic to talk about today, but here it goes. 
Um, so I was born um, in Maplewood at St. John's Hospital, which is owned by Fairview now. Um, and I grew up in Woodbury. Um, my whole family lives in the tw uh, Minnesota. Um, my parents both have five or six siblings. I have a big family um, and they kind of spread the entire Eastern side of the state from Rochester to Duluth. Um, these are just a few pictures of my family. Um, you can see me in kindergarten. I'm right in the middle. Um, I have um, three siblings. Um, so in kind of the bo bottom corner picture, um, you can see me and then I have two brothers and a sister. We're all two years apart and I'm the oldest. Um, and then there's just a picture of me raking leaves or something with my brother. Um, and then the one with all the kids um, is my cousins on my dad's side. Um, every year at Christmas, we'd have to have a big chaotic picture taking session that took a long time because um, no one would ever look at the camera at the same time. Um, but you can see all of us. Um, I'm off to the side um, and I'm the only one that doesn't have like blondish hair. So I'm easy to pick out. Um, then, so after, when I was about eight, my family moved to Portland, Oregon for six months. It was kind of a temporary thing with my dad's job. So we kept our house in Woodbury, um, but it was kind of a unique experience. Um, we lived in an apartment and um, we traveled a lot. Um, so even though it was a long time ago, I remember it pretty well. Um, so you can see um, the top two pictures of, are my brother and I um, in our little ski suits, um, skiing with my mom at Mount Hood. Um, my dad was a really big skier, um, so we did that a lot. I think we all started when we were two or three, um, and my dad was very frugal, so we always spent the entire day on the hill from when it opened till when it closed, and you didn't get to spend a lot of time sitting in the chalet. Um, so it taught me a lot of endurance. Um, um, I didn't like it that much at first, but now I like skiing. Um, and then there's just a picture of my uh, younger brother and sister climbing around in the logs by the beach. And then this is my grandparents with my siblings and my mom and I um, at a waterfall. Um, that's my grandpa kind of oblivious that we're taking a picture. Um, that was kind of typical of him. Um, and he was an anesthesiologist. Um, so kind of started my interest in medicine. Um, when I was about 10, we moved to Kansas City for my dad's job. Um, it was a lot different than Woodbury because we lived kind of on six acres, kind of outside of a suburb. Um, so we're a little more isolated. Um, there's our backyard. Um, and that's a picture of me and my brother and sister paddling around on our paddle boat on our new pond right after we moved. Um, and then even though we lived in Kansas City, I still kind of considered myself from Minnesota. Um, we went home for every holiday. Um, and I'd say about a third of the summer was spent in Minnesota. Um, so I spent a lot of time driving through Iowa. Um, I also went to Creighton, so um, I'm familiar with the roads in Iowa. Um, up here again is one of our chaotic family pictures with my dad's family. Um, we always did a yearly um, family reunion at a cabin somewhere up north. We went somewhere different every time. Um, we didn't have a family cabin because my grandma hates cabins because she doesn't like old dark things. Um, so we had to rent one, but um, this I think is at Gull Lake um, about the time my family moved to Missouri. Um, and then this is a picture of my family on our boat. Um, I think this is like Pepin, um, but I included it because that's something that we did a lot while living in Missouri. It gets really, really hot there in the summer. Anyone has ever lived there? Um, so that was one of the only things that we did on the weekends that was bearable to do outside. Um, and it's something I really enjoy. Um, and in this picture, it was hard to get us to smile as kids, but my grandma was taking a picture of herself instead of us for a bit. So that got everyone to smile. Um, then um, for college, I was a biochemistry major. Um, I started at a college called William Jewell, which was tiny down in um, Liberty, Missouri, where my family lived near Kansas City. Um, I was kind of, I picked that because I kind of wanted to go to Minnesota, um, but I kind of wanted to be near my family since I had three siblings at home still. So I chose the route at home. And then about a month after I started, my dad took a job back in Minnesota, um, which I thought was never going to happen. Um, so I actually transferred up the next year to another small college in the Twin Cities called Northwestern, not to be confused with the Chicago one that you've probably heard of. Um, and I was able to get into the honors program, which was good because then I didn't have to lose all my scholarships um, as a transfer student. 
that is something that is difficult. And then after graduating, um, to get clinical experience for med school, I worked at the CNA um, in a hospital on St. Joseph's, um, which I don't think is really operating too much, but it's in downtown St. Paul. Um, and that was good experience to kind of see the, like a different side of medicine and kind of understand um, kind of what it's like for nurses and CNAs um, throughout the day. And I think that'd be helpful as a doctor just to kind of have had that experience in the past. Um, I'm kind of glad to be done with it though. Um, I was always kind of particular about washing my hands and not liking germs. So I think my family was kind of surprised that I was able to do that job, but I did it. So. Um, and then I went to Creighton for med school. Here's a few pictures of me on my white coat ceremony. Um, and then this is a picture of my brother and I um, we went mountain biking. Um, he came down there when I was in M3. Um, so he was two years behind me at Creighton. Um, and that's just, we're just looking out over the kind of brownish Nebraska landscape. Um, and then after med school, I actually graduated in 2022. I had a hard time deciding what I wanted to do. I kind of, I had to like narrow it down pretty early, but then I wasn't able to explore my options very much during my third year. So I actually kind of made a plan to do a research year and then apply to what I decided later. Um, and I didn't really know what I was doing when I decided to do a research year. So I was, there was a little space where I was like, what did I just do since I didn't apply to ARAS the first year? I mean, it took me a little while um, after I got done with med school to get everything set up, which was kind of stressful. Um, but I was able to spend some time with my family. I eventually went down to Mayo to do um, radiology research there. Um, um, I focused on looking at the CT system. They have a new CT system um, called Photon Counting Detector CT. It was a FDA approved about in 2021. Um, but Mayo has had a research system for about 10 years um, and one was, was one of the first places in the country to do so. Um, basically, it uses a different detector um, where a normal CT system, well, each like x-ray that comes in, it'll convert it to visible light and then kind of the added effect of everything will be what's sent to the detector and uh, what contributes to the image. Um, but in the photon counting detector type of system, it can detect like it counts like the name, and then it also kind of can tell the energies of different photons of different x-rays that come in. Um, and that can contribute to a lot clearer picture. Um, you can also kind of reduce the dose that way. Um, so I was involved in some studies comparing um, the normal CT system to their new CT system. Um, and then I also spent some time um, looking at, um, I was able to screen for Crohn's disease um, with strictures um, near the ileocecal valve. Um, for inclusion in studies. So that was kind of fun because I could actually review the CT scans and then I'd meet with um, my advisor later and talk about if I thought a study should be included and why. Um, so it was kind of nice because it felt like being an actual radiologist a little bit. Um, and then I was also able to practice on a CT scanner reconstructing images. And I learned a little bit more about all the different factors that go into um, contributing to the final image that you get. Um, and then this is a picture of my grandma and grandpa um, and their farm. Um, they live about 30 minutes outside of Rochester. Um, so while I was at Mayo, I was able to stay with them. Um, so that was a big plus for that because it was nice to be able to um, do some really cool research and then also be able to spend some time with my grandparents. Um, and then this is just where my family lives now. We live in Chisago City. It's about 45 minutes northeast of here on a really tiny lake, um, but it's a nice place to go for like a day, one day off. Um, it's nice that they're close and it's kind of relaxing and quiet. And then kind of down the corner is just Lindstrom, which is the town where we live. It has a lot of lakes. Um, and then that's a picture of the St. Croix Interstate Park, um, which is in Taylor's Falls, about 15 minutes from our house. Um, and it's a nice place to go for a hike, go for a hike or something because it's nice and peaceful. Um, these are just a few of my hobbies. Um, I like to cross country ski. Um, I kind of developed that hobby during, living in Omaha because they don't have any downhill skiing that is really worth it. And occasionally it snows. None of these pictures are in Omaha, but <laughs> <laughs> um, the two pictures um, where you can see me best are, I went with my sister up in Tedaguch State Park, which is by the North Shore. Um, and the snow is so deep that we got a little lost because all the signs were covered in snow. So that is a picture there. And those are not my sunglasses. I was borrowing those I think they look kind of odd, but 
And then these are the last pictures. Um, there's my family on a recent ski trip. Um, and then down here is in Arizona. I did a rotation in Phoenix because Creighton has a campus down there. So I was able to do a fourth year rotation down there. And then this is just my sister and I hiking at the North Shore. A lot of the pictures um, involve my sister because she's one of the few people who is good at forcing me to get pictures taken of myself. Um, and that's a little bit about me. Um, and then finally, um, why I chose to come here. I always knew I wanted to do a surgery intern year before radiology. Um, so that narrowed it down to a few places. And I really wanted to be close to home. Um, I knew that the U of M was a great place to train. Um, it's got a lot of different things that I can see during my one year. And it's really important to me that you're able to work really hard, but then on your one day off, you're able to spend time with your family. Um, Cause I think that support is really helpful. So that's why I came here. Um, and I'm looking forward to working with everyone for the next year. In terms, if you don't know yet, we're gonna go up to PWB 11th floor for junior car. Thank <laughs> you. 